Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Reverend Johnston Sacco from Open Blessing Church at Quarters, Nairobi, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription Program this amazing and wonderful Sunday morning, East African time. I believe the Lord has got something special to speak into our lives. I therefore want to invite you to listen and may the good Lord bless you. But before then, allow me to pray this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we once again appear in your presence. We thank you, Father, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. And we thank you, Father, for every day that you open up for us an opportunity to hear your word. Father, I commit myself to you as a servant and a vessel minister to your people in a very special way and cause the anointing to sit upon us even as we hear this word in the name of Jesus. I give you glory and I honor you, my Father, because this is my prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good morning, wherever you are following us from. I want to invite you in this place to hear the word of the Lord. Now, this morning, I'd like to speak about a subject I have titled, Raise People, Raise People. It is God's desire, God's intention, that people that come through our hands, that come through our paths, will be able to do something that you have encouraged them or you have been able to motivate them to become. Now, whatever is your responsibility, whatever is your professional um you know, work, whatever it is you are in ministry, you must have a desire to raise people. Raise people who can be like you or even better. It's God's intention, it's God's purpose that you will be able to raise men and women after your pattern, after your path in the name of Jesus. You have to raise people. There's a statement that people say like father, like son, like mother, like daughter, they are basically talking about the thing that I want to discuss with us this morning. Now, you must be an individual who thrives or enjoys people who are taking up after your path. And if there is nobody following or taking up after your path in the ways of the Lord, then there is a gap that needs to be filled. Let's read the Bible in the book of Second Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, I'm reading from verse number 1. We're going to read a few verses there, and I believe that you'll be blessed. 2 Timothy chapter number 2 from verse number 1 through to verse number 7. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be fast to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all these things. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to understand, child of God, that God desires us to be leaders. God desires us to raise men and women after our pattern. Now, there are a lot of things I want to talk about this Sunday. But I want you to understand that it's God's intention that we will raise people after our pattern. And sometimes it's also the individual who will seek that which blesses him in a person and follow after the pattern. So there are two things here. It is when the teacher also raises people below them, but it's also another aspect where the one, the would-be student also sees a pattern in an individual and seeks to follow after that pattern. That is what 
the Bible tells us. Now, in terms of biblical examples, you can clearly see that Jesus Christ came after the order of John the Baptist. John says, I am a man set to prepare the way for one who will come. And this one who will come will be greater than I am. So John is preparing the path, preparing the people, preparing the place, preparing the platform for the one that would come to follow him. Now, when Jesus shows up, we see tremendous humility in Jesus Christ. In fact, John almost refuses to baptize Jesus Christ. John says, the one whom I am unworthy to untie his sandals. So when Jesus appears to him at the place of baptism, now John, John, John almost refuses to baptize Jesus, but Jesus humbles himself that he is baptized by John the Baptist. So there are many deep things I will talk about this morning, but I only want to, to, to focus myself on you must be willing, you must, your heart must have a place to raise leaders. Sometimes these leaders will be able to do much more than we have done ourselves. Now, I want you to know that the Lord has been speaking to me that we need to deal with the conditions of our hearts. Now, if you're a leader who is threatened by the people that are coming be be after you, then the place of your heart is not correct. I've never seen teachers complain that their, their students or pupils, in fact, pass the exams more than they did themselves. I've never seen. I've never seen teachers complain that this child is so bright. He's going to be bright than me. I've never seen a teacher complain about the success of a class, the success of a student in a particular subject. That I have not seen. Now, that is the heart of leadership. And the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Is there a gap in society today about raising up people, faithful people, who will be able to do what you do? It is true. People struggle with delegation. People struggle with allowing people to stand in the gap when they are not there. It is in the professional cycle where people struggle to delegate. I just went through a class last week and, 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 and there, were, there were certain categories of people and I said the tragedy, the tragedy in leadership is for leaders to take every situation the same way. Oh, hallelujah. There are things that you need to eliminate. There are things you need to do. There are things you need to plan. As a leader, you must know what environments you need to give a command, an environment you need to collaborate, a place where you need to have consensus, and a place where you need to look at it as convenience. Leadership. Bible tells us, and the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now, let me ask you. You have been leading even your own family, even your own business, at the marketplace, you are a leader. Let me ask you, have you raised people? Have you raised men and women who will be able to do the things you do when you are not there? Let me tell you. Don't have this, this problem that Moses had. Until the father-in-law Jethro told him, if Moses, you continue in this direction, you will die. Appoint able men to listen to the issues that come from the people. It's only that which is difficult for them that they'll be able to bring to you. You cannot sit and judge people from morning to evening, listening to every case and offering direction. That means you're not a leader. You're not a leader. You're not a leader. Now, a leader creates leaders. And I'm talking about this morning, raise leaders. In your family, raise leaders. In ministry, raise leaders. At the marketplace, raise leaders. Now, there are many people who apply a strategy, I would call it the Amalekite strategy. 
the Amalekite strategy. It's a useless strategy. You see, the Amalekites were known if an army had gone to war, let's say Israel had gone to war, they would now come and attack the women and the children that were left. It's a poor strategy. Why can't you confront men your equal? Why do you want to take advantage? Now, there are people who don't create leaders. They still lead us. And I want to speak today, whether you are a professional leader, whether you are a spiritual leader, whatever leadership you purport to do or you actually do, don't be a person who steals leaders. When I say you steal leaders, I mean you get people who have been refined elsewhere and you want them to come and fit into your matrix. You are a poor leader. You are a poor leader. You cannot succeed or thrive because of somebody else who has put up his energy to create leaders. You must be a leader who must, you know, mentor people after your pattern. Praise God. After your pattern. Mentor people to be like you are. Grow people within your circle. Don't just grab people. Don't just steal leaders. Or you identify somebody who is in another place and you think they're doing a good job and now you want to poach them. That's not a good leader. Create leaders. Create leaders. Create leaders. Praise the Lord. And the things you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. This is what it means. The fact that you know that I'm doing things in a particular way, I must surround myself with people I know they are willing or they can have the ability to transfer that which I know and have passed to them that they can be able to turn it to other people also. Raise leaders. Raise leadership in your family. Raise leadership at the marketplace. Raise leaders in ministry. Allow them to thrive. Faithful men. Now, two critical issues that I will not end without saying. When you are raising leaders, they pattern after you. In other words, they can perpetrate the same message. Now, God has called us into specific directions. God has called us to minister in a particular way. We are in a professional place. And so, this message is not a message to be adulterated or diluted. The things you have heard from me, same message. Commit this message to faithful men. The other word is faithful. You cannot raise a leader who is not faithful to you, or rather believes in what you stand for. Commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. I had this concept many years ago of a man who preached the gospel and he said, I commit this message to you that you will be able to teach others also. Praise the Lord. That particular message stuck in our hearts and we continue to speak about it today. This message you had from me among many witnesses. Now, there are a lot of people don't know the difference between the true church and cultish organizations. One of them is something we call secrecy. Any place you go, that activities of that organization is shrouded in secrecy. That where only the leader can interpret the direction of the ministry. Hmm. That is a simple mark of a cultic organization. But what tells us, and the things you have heard from me among many witnesses. Many witnesses. Because the gospel of God, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, is not shrouded in secrecy. No. The gospel, what we preach, we preach in the open. That is why every morning I share with us the word of God in the name of the Lord openly. Without telling you, you have to go to this place, you have to do this for you to receive a blessing. No, the word of God has the capacity to defend itself. 
The word of God can stand for itself. So we need not hide. We must present the word of God as it is. This morning, we are asking you to raise leaders. Don't be the only one who must make a decision. You must allow people within your family, your spouse, your children, to make decisions at their level. Guide them to make decisions. Raise leaders. Praise the name of the Lord. May the good Lord be with you. The good Lord bless you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for ministering to us. Help us, my Father, teachers, to raise leaders, faithful people. That this message I've had among many witnesses, they'll be able to have capacity to share with others also. This is our prayer this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The good Lord therefore be with you. The good Lord bless you. This has been your servant and your host, Reverend Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Pressure Program, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am from the Open Blessing Church Headquarters, Nairobi. May the good Lord bless you, the good Lord keep you, and the good Lord cause you to raise leaders. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning. Please raise up and go to church and be blessed of the Lord. Amen and amen.